certain that those skills are going to have, are going to have decayed. Perhaps then what one can do is look at health outcomes at, at that point. Now, health outcomes don't have to be on a national basis. One could do this within one clinic because each single clinic can make a difference. The next example I'd like to, to, to go through is in terms of the multidisciplinary tumor board. Attendance, as so many people have, have mentioned, is, is vital. And that gives you a metric that you can follow. And who these attendees are, do the radiation oncologists bother to come? I can be rude about radiation oncologists since I am one. Um, I would dream of being rude about surgeons, of course. <laughs> um, my husband's a surgeon, and hence, hence all of that belly laughing from Ben. Um, satisfaction. Well, again, nobody's going to, everybody's going to find an excuse to get out of it unless, unless, unless the thing goes fairly well and smoothly and efficiently, and it starts on time and it finishes on time, and, there's no, and no one person gets to grandstand, then people are going to, going to be satisfied. Do people learn? Well, you can actually record this. You can record attendance. You can have somebody, maybe a rotating chair, filling out a... A, a, a form that you can actually template and use time after time. We do this within, within, within my department. We actually have a look, see, we check that every, that every patient plan that's presented actually does meet a standard of care. And if it doesn't meet a standard of care, we have another column to document why it doesn't meet standard of care. So that when you've got really unusual tumors, for example, or rare tumors, you can't just dismiss their the, 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 uh, the radiation oncologist's plan, for example, if there is no standard of care, if there are no guidelines to meet one of these very rare situations. But you can document that. And what you can also do is document the key points of the discussion so that you can not note down where the really controversial issues are. And out of that, you can often def identify things that they, you can then bring back to grand rounds or to other teaching sessions or say to somebody, well, next week, I wonder if you could look this up and tell us what the results are. So there's an outcome. There's an educational outcome immediately. So you can also look at process outcomes. You can say, oh, well, we would love to do this, but we don't have access to this sort of scanner. Or what other ways are there of doing it? And somebody actually taking, taking charge and looking and seeing what can be done. So here we've got metrics that hopefully will result in healthcare outcomes, and from two boards, you can actually do that because you can come back and you can do follow-up on, on all of these cases. So I hope this gives you an idea of some of the scope of the metrics that one can use. Metrics, I didn't like that word. It's sort of got a harsh sound to it. I much prefer to use measurables. So in conclusion, educational programs, learning is not enough, doing is what counts. It just sounds like a truism, but it's one that we forget over and over and over again with these wretched training programs. How many of you have been to training programs, particularly IT-based ones, when, you're, when um, some anonymous body tells you you have to be trained in a particular IT program that you're not actually going to get to use very often and you've forgotten your password by the time you get out of the door? That is damn well contribution to healthcare. Curriculum design is, dri is driven by identified gaps not what I think somebody in Washington, D.C. needs to know in their practice, because my practice in Seattle may be very, very different. It certainly is not what someone in England would be doing, it's not some, and it's certainly not going to be the same as somebody in Ghana. But the, but by using principles of curriculum design, you can adapt this for all sorts of circumstances. You can then use this to identify your measurable uh, changes in behavior, because that's what education is all about, changing behavior. And this has got to be very specific for each particular program, so you do have to spend time thinking about those wretched objectives, and it's got to be context specific. I've given you some references here, and they'll be on the website, of course. Thank you very much. <laughs>